guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Taito Ecology. We are finally, finally checking out our Himalayas biome again, after what feels like so long since we've last seen these rhinos here, and um, our little red pandas, which you can barely see peeking over there, way over in their bamboo forest. And so much has actually changed in the game since the last time we were in the Himalayas, especially with the predators. So these big predators here who can now fail hunts, which is very important to this current episode because I believe the last time we were here, we were putting our finishing touches on um, this little oasis, this little like paradise that we're making for our Bengal tigers with this forest over here, our lovely rhododendron bushes, and even some little uh, bamboo in case we want to place some, some red pandas in here for a snack. I believe we have some marmots in here already. We wanted to make sure that there was a ton of food available to um, our Bengal tigers once we finally do place them in because of course the cats love to eat. We had that similar situation with the um, snow leopards in the past when we first added them in way back there. There they go. And actually, the snow leopards are kind of going to be able to reach our Bengal tigers. So this is kind of like another situation that we had um, in the rainforest where the cats sort of competed for territory. And I'm going to be quite interested to see if um, the tigers and the snow leopards have the same sort of, uh, sort of relationship between each other. I mean, we might as well go right in here and drop them in, right? I mean, why even wait? We do have some food for them to eat and it is of course possible that they could fail their hunts now. So at least um, we do have plenty of marmots in the area for them to munch on or at least attempt to munch on. It costs 100 Taito coins to unlock these guys too, so they are quite expensive to place into the biome. But I know that they're going to be a beautiful addition to this place. They are going to love living in this little forest over here right by the waterside because of course, Tigers are some of the only big cats who actually enjoy swimming around in water, or at least lazing around in it during the day. So I think we'll place them right about here so that they can kind of uh, take control of this entire zone at least, as well as a little bit of uh, this river over here. And of course, they can interact with our snow leopards. They're even on their list right here. So we're going to have to see what happens in that situation. We'll drop these guys in, take a look, and then take a peek at those notifications that are currently uh, popping up up there. Wow, one of them just went bolting off. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh, how beautiful is this guy? <laughs> he is so goofy too. Oh my goodness, with that bob to his walk. I love that when they give him those goofy little walks. Oh my gosh, and he's going right to the water. Of course, he's gonna go check out that water. We should make sure that he has some fish in there, actually. Um, they do have fish. Okay, so nothing has really come over here to um eat the fish on our little Bengal tigers, but there we go, guys. So we have some lovely fish for them to eat. We have some marmots, um, and I believe we should probably put a couple more um, little tiny morsels for them to munch on too. Maybe we'll even put some deer over here so in case they really want a larger meal, they can have that as well. But where did that other tiger go? I mean, he was just bolting off. Um, is that the tiger sleeping down there? It is. Oh, how cute is that? All curled up to sleep. Where did you decide to sleep? Right in the pika territory. Okay, so this guy obviously prefers pikas, which means that we should probably plop some sort of a pikas over here as well. And this guy, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I have a feeling that he really likes some um, fish instead <laughs> in this particular tiger. So let's pop some pikas over here. So these guys will have their uh, favorite snacks to eat whenever they need to. They don't have to travel too far from uh, their little forest anyway. Hopefully that doesn't mean that the snow leopards are going to come over here and try to uh, take this territory for their own. I know we didn't exactly make like a special area for the snow leopards over there where we're making this big gigantic forest for um, the tigers, but maybe we should try to spruce up the um, snow leopard area. Maybe they would appreciate that. We might want to try doing that at some point. And we actually have a ton of little pikas over here. Oh my goodness, I did not see this one back here before. Um, they seem okay though. So they're relatively okay. They're not like going out of control like um, our goatees at least. And for the most part, I've noticed that most of these creatures seem to be under control. Like we haven't had any overpopulation issues in the Himalayas. I mean, crossing my fingers that I didn't just uh, totally jinx that on us, but so far so good guys. So that's kind of interesting. I think it's because it's so much bigger than um, the other biomes that we're used to. Maybe because everything is so spread out. And look at all this grass all of a sudden. Whoa. 
Oh my goodness, and our um, pangolins are starving. Oh no, that means that you guys need some uh, insects actually. You are in zone two, so we need to go find the Chinese pangolins in um, zone two somewhere. So that's actually quite far away. Okay, we're in zone two now. Now where are our pangolins? Let's see, I don't see any territories for Chinese pangolins except for the ones way over there, but that's zone one. Where on earth are you little guys? Am I just not seeing you? Um, it kind of looks like we have a lot of different like ants and insects for them to eat too, so I'm not really sure what's going on. I wonder if it's one of those situations where it's um, an invisible territory again. That is definitely possible, unless I am just completely missing it right now. Wait a second. Are you seriously in the tree? No wonder I didn't see you. Okay, oh my gosh, oh my goodness. Can we like get to them fast enough? Okay, here's some moths, here's some butterflies. Here's, um. let's see, we can put some ants in here. Though you have ants over here already. I mean, did it change because they're decomposers now? Do they actually like not enjoy eating the um, decomposers? There's so many right here. Like I, I don't know if I want to drop like another group of uh, ants over here. Oh my goodness, poor little pangolin though. I wonder where you are. Um, let's see if I can get down there so I can click on their territory again. Let's see, um, how many are left? Only one, it can't even reproduce. Um, it did get a bite to eat though, wherever it is. I'm not sure. I think we just like barely saved this guy, but it doesn't really seem like um, it's going to help out much because he can't reproduce. So what we might actually do is plop another group of uh, Chinese pangolins right next to him so that he can uh, crossbreed between those territories, just like um, the new update allows us to do now. And hopefully this little group right here will be able to eat all of these different types of insects. Um, hopefully we have enough. I mean, there seems like there's so many bugs here. They're insectivores, so they should, um, appreciate all of these different types right here. We have so many ant colonies in the area. And of course, the earthworms, we have the butterflies, we have the moths, so I can't see why they would, uh, not enjoy living here. So let's see, hopefully they'll uh, go off and find something to eat. They're so cute though, aren't they? They are adorable. <laughs> the way that they hold up their little front legs is just adorable. Okay, so we should probably check up on our tigers too. See where they wandered off to. Because of course the tigers have a very wide territory so they could be basically anywhere. They could be basically anywhere that they want to be. Though this one is still lazing by the water. Oh my goodness, isn't that just perfect? Isn't that just so fitting? This one in particular definitely Definitely prefers the fish, I have a feeling. So this one is going to just be lazing right by the water side so he can scoop up some fish when he wakes up. I have a feeling that is exactly what that guy's doing. But the other one was way off here. That one charged way off into the distance to uh, go take a look at some pikas, I believe, or were they marmots? Um, I'm not sure if this was the uh, territory or not. For some reason, I always get the pikas and the marmots confused. Um, I believe he was right over here. Um, now, where are you, little tiger? I mean, it shouldn't be too hard to spot the tiger because they are very, very large and they are also orange. So it shouldn't be like on the snow leopards who blend in so well with the snow. But I can't seem to see this guy at the moment. It seems like it definitely wandered away. Hopefully it didn't get uh, injured by the snow leopards. Um, I have a feeling that we're going to have to worry about that sort of situation when they eventually have cubs. There's only 32 weeks left until the snow leopards reproduce, so that's actually not too far away. We might be seeing that very, very shortly. And uh, look at you, you already found a snack, it looks like. That's good. So at least these predators are having a little bit of um, a better time catching their food than our big cats in um, in the rainforest because they were certainly struggling to uh, pin down these agotes. All of those agotes that we had just uh, just like literally flooding the place. Um, even this one managed to catch one. It looks like, um, it's a pika. Okay. And he left a little bit of meat behind too, just in case any of our other creatures are wandering around looking for a snack. But I am a little bit concerned with the fact that suddenly we can't seem to find our tiger. What is going on here? How far did you actually wander off, little guy? Um, I was hoping that they would kind of stick around their own territory, but it certainly doesn't seem like that is going to be the case. Um, at least our pangolins seem happy, so I don't think we have to really worry about them right now. But yeah, like, I don't know where on earth that tiger went off to. At least we know the location of one, though. At least we know that this guy is still sleeping right next to the water, happy as can be. 
so uh, we shouldn't have to worry about them. It looks like he might be going off for a different meal though, which is quite interesting. Maybe he'll uh, pick off one of those others and there's the tiger. You are sticking by your territory, aren't you? They even have that giant goofy grin just like plastered to their face. It reminds me of uh, Tigger from Winnie the Pooh, which was my favorite character in Winnie the Pooh. I almost expect them to go like bouncing along like Tigger or something. It's just so adorable. So other than that, guys, everything else seems to be mainly in balance. I mean, we had a couple of groups of different creatures die off while we were gone, but honestly, it's nothing that is really, really concerning me right now. So what we might do is unlock yet another zone and maybe prepare it for a different type of animal. Um, we have two more zones to unlock in the Himalayas, which is quite interesting. I mean, we're getting pretty close to um, unlocking the entire place. And then we'll have this huge biome to explore. Oh my goodness, it's going to take ages to uh, go through each and every zone. But over here, what can we place over here? I mean, we have so many large creatures to add in now, like the elephants. And um, I think there's even a bear that we can unlock. The doles too. So we have doles, Asian black bears, and Asian elephants. And um, we could probably just like spread them out between zones four and five. And I think they would appreciate that. I'm not really sure how black bears and doles interact with the big cats, so that's something that we might need to uh, take a quick peek at and maybe their biodex, maybe it'll mention something about that before we properly place them into um, the biome here. But the elephants should be really interesting to see um, interact with all of our creatures because I'm assuming that nothing is really going to try to mess with them. I'm assuming just like the rhinos that our cats are probably going to steer clear of them. Uh, but we will definitely have to see if that's the case. So now that we've opened up this area, why don't we go ahead and place some grass in here, some pollinators, some decomposers, make sure that everything is alive and well. Um, it looks like, of course, the uh, tigers are the only things that can actually come over here. And it looks like we can also press the space bar to rearrange the plants. Oh my goodness. I did not know that that was a new feature. So if there's a particular type of clump of uh, joint furs that you're looking for, then you can just press the space bar to uh, change it around and give it a bit of a different look. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, I did not know that that could, uh, that could happen. Even the fairy grass has a different way to be placed. So that's really neat. Okay. Okay. So if we want something very, very specific, then we just have to remember to do that. We'll place some more grass over here though. I kind of like the uh, rough look of just placing it in random clumps and then letting it spread however it uh, possibly wants to in its randomly generated way because it makes it look a little bit more realistic in my opinion. I don't want it looking um, like we've really constructed the place. Like our, um, our little forest here, even that is just randomly placed little trees. And I'm expecting that these trees are going to spread as well. Eventually we're going to have these tiny little baby trees <laughs> just poking up beside all of these big ones. Um, I really like this one too. Unfortunately, it's mainly an ornamental tree. It has no edible leaves on it, so it's not really going to help any of our creatures. But I think it looks very, very nice and um, it definitely is fitting to this sort of biome. So I will probably place a couple more over here as well because um, I think elephants and maybe even bears would really enjoy just wandering through the trees along with um, our tigers. And hopefully they're not going to uh, fight for territory. That is the one concern that they're going to end up fighting a lot and um, we're going to have to keep replacing them. But we do want some ants over here. We definitely want some ants um, piled up on this little hill so that they can get rid of any carcasses of our tiny little herbivores if they happen to pop up. Um, the ants, of course, are actually decomposers now. They're classed as decomposers in um, Taito Ecology. So that's where you're going to have to look for the ants now. They're not in um, the creatures anymore. So what do you think we should actually put over here after we finish this place? Like, I'm trying to figure out if maybe we should go with the um, black bear or if we should go with the Asian elephant, maybe. Um, the doles might be interesting to place over in zone one, actually. Closer to zone one, maybe the edge between like one and five to see how they interact with all of those herbivores that we have over there. Like, I think that's probably our most jam-packed section of the entire biome. So that would be a pretty good place to uh, put a pack of uh, doles over here so they would have plenty to eat. It looks like some of these areas are struggling, but I don't really feel like we have to worry about that right now. Um, why are you guys so hungry? Oh, and the pangolins again. What is going on here? There is so much food. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, so the marmots, yeah, like I am looking at the marmots right now and they appear to be starving a little bit. Now they're finally going to get some food though. I mean, they can eat the fairy grass, right? I don't see why they wouldn't be able to. 
Um, and the same with the Chevrotains, the pangolins. I just literally do not understand why they are starving. Um, it's actually you guys this time. Okay, so you have the ants over here. Um, oh, the red pandas have low health. That's a different little notification. Are you, are you okay, guys? Are you feeling sick? Oh, that's very strange. And there's only one left over here too. Okay. Well, we know that we can fix that now by placing another group of pandas in the area. So I'll go in here and plop another one down in our little bamboo forest so these guys can have some friends. Um, it looks like three are going to pop up in a group. So there we go. That should uh, certainly help the situation. Only 17 weeks until they actually reproduce. And um, the pangolins. Oh my goodness, this is very strange. What is causing the low health, I wonder? Um, the chevrotains, whoa, it's only two babies in this group too. Where on earth are you guys? Like, I'm assuming they must just be wandering so far away from their territories that they can't figure out where to eat. And, oh my goodness, did you guys just like literally die off? I think they did. Oh my gosh, that is so strange. And there's the pangolins going, what is going on? <laughs> Everything's going out of control now. The pangolins just died off, the chevrotains died. Okay. Okay, that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, I mean, there's so many insects right over here that I just can't understand why the um, pangolins decided that they weren't going to eat. Um, we'll place another of them back in here, I suppose. I mean, maybe it was just a very strange glitch. Um, I believe the pangolins were actually at the front of the list, weren't they? It seems like that's usually where the um, insectivores are hiding on our lists. So let's see, we have um, the musk deer down here, I believe. Is this the mu musk deer or the muntjac? That's the question. I can never remember which one has those fangs. It's the musk deer, okay. So they are alive and well. This is probably their territory. Um, there's only four of them in this territory, but they are going to be reproducing very, very shortly. Yeah, I'm not sure why these territories are starving. I am honestly not sure. I guess um, maybe they were sleeping overnight and they're waking up very, very hungry and it's just like a rush to get to uh, the nearest supply of food. I mean, the game is moving at a much faster pace than it used to, so the creatures kind of have to eat more often as well. So maybe it's just like messing with their sleep cycles or something. I honestly have no idea. It is um, a little bit strange, but we will replace our Chinese pangolins. We'll plop them right back down where they're supposed to be and um, hopefully this time they'll have a little bit of a better life. I'm really not sure what happened to you guys. Um, oh my gosh, all curled up in a pile. How adorable is that? And um, our marmots are having trouble. Which zone is that in? Zone three. Okay, so we know why they're having trouble because of those cats. So uh, the Bengal tigers are certainly able to get their meals, which is a very, very good thing to see. I am very pleased to see that these guys are actually managing to uh, take some of our um, herbivores down because I was worried after going to the rainforest that these guys were just going to starve off. Oddly enough, the Himalaya seems like it's the exact opposite from the rainforest, where we had so many of our predators really like struggling to catch a meal in the rainforest. These guys are just like destroying our herbivores. And meanwhile, the herbivores are actually having a lot of trouble just finding grass, I guess, finding grass and finding um, different insects for them to eat. So that's quite interesting. I don't know. It could also be because this place is much bigger than the other biomes, so there is much more grass to cover. Um, there's probably a bit of a balancing act there as well. But we might as well go back in here and fill up the place with just a little bit more greenery. We'll pop some more trees in here and uh, see how that goes. The bench oak, that might be nice. And um, some Himalayan honeysuckle over here as well. And then I would like to place some pollinators in the area so that they can definitely help spread all of this grass that we're placing. Um, the pomegranate might also be nice to place over here. A little bit of fruit, just in case one of the animals likes fruit. Um, and there's those pangolins again. Is that actually the pangolins I just placed down? No, this is zone two. Okay, okay, I wonder if there's like a strange glitch going on with the pangolins right now. I'm starting to uh, get a little bit suspicious of that because I've, I'm pretty sure we just uh, placed those guys down earlier in the episode. So that's interesting because I know that they have a ton of insects to eat. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. We'll place some moths over here, and then we'll place some moths on the other side as well. And there go the pangolins, yep. Okay, well, I don't know guys, I don't know. <laughs> I tried to help you, I really did. I made sure that you had a lot of insects to eat, but um, it doesn't seem like that helped you very much. So I'll have to do a little bit more research on that and see if I can figure out why that is the um, way that it is. Hopefully next time we come back to the Himalayas, we'll be able to properly supply our pangolins with um, their good food source. 
some sort of good food source. Um, but for now, let's place a couple marmots over here. We'll play some, some pikas over here as well so they can kind of uh, thrive and spread. Do we have grass on this side? I believe we do. Yeah, we have a little bit of grass on this side. Hopefully that's enough to uh, keep them tied over for now at least. And we should probably place some mushrooms in the area as well because we know that they love their mushrooms. So I'll plop a couple of those down too and let them pick uh, where they want to spread around. I know that I can't place them too close to the water, otherwise they will uh, get waterlogged, I guess. And we'll place a couple more up there too. And uh, there's our marmots, also having low population, but that might be um, a situation of the cats just eating so many of them at once that they're having trouble um, reproducing. But a lot of our herbivores in particular reproduce at a much faster rate than they used to. So in all honesty, I'm not too concerned about this situation. I feel like it'll probably balance itself out. Um, we'll just place a couple of rhododendrons over there because I love those trees. And um, now I think, I think this is good. So hopefully when we come back to zone four here, we'll see that um, all of these creatures have kind of like spread around, the grass has spread around a little bit more, and then we can work at hopefully adding in some of, of our larger creatures, like the elephants or maybe the bears, or even um, the doles, the pack of doles would be really interesting to add in once we um, open up zone five as well, I feel. So that might be what we do next time we come to the Himalayas. But for now, we can take a look at this sleeping little kitty here as we end out the episode. So thank you all so much for watching today and I will see you next time. Bye guys.